in February of this year, the medical device industry was um, presented with a proposed amendment to 21 CFR 820. This is the FDA's regulation for quality system requirements. And the proposed amendment said, instead of maintaining two different um, criteria for quality systems in the US, ISO 1345, which is an international standard, and also 21 CFR, which is the FDA's requirements, instead, we're gonna harmonize things and we're going to, um, by reference, include 1345 as our quality system requirements and get rid of the existing 21 CFR 820. There were a couple of record requirements that they were going to keep, but in general, they were gonna throw away 21 CFR 820 and adopt ISO 1345 by reference. Now, on the surface, great idea because most of the companies out there have 21, um, have 1345 and the differences between 1345 2016 and the QSR are very small. But the rationale for why this was going to be a no brainer for it would only take a year to do this transition was that it would save money and save time and be more efficient to have one system. I don't agree. I agree that we need to make the transition, but not for the same reasons. The theory that it will be more efficient to have one system, yes, it's true, but the financial impact that they're projecting isn't even close to what we're actually gonna see. We're not gonna see a big improvement. We're gonna see a very minor improvement. The, what companies do is they create a procedure, one procedure that meets both requirements. They don't have two separate quality systems. They don't maintain two quality systems. They have one quality system that meets both requirements. So they have to add a couple of things. So a gap analysis might take a few hours for a consultant to do and make a couple modifications for, or procedures, and now you're compliant. So yes, I would agree that it, you know, it is going to be easy for us to transition from one to the other, but I wouldn't agree that it's going to save us any time or money. And it's definitely not going to save the FDA any time or money. They're going from, they don't do anything with ISO 1345 right now, and they're going to have to retrain all their inspectors. So what are the real benefits of why we want to change the quality system requirements? And that's really simple. And that's what they should have focused their impact analysis on. The need for why we need ISO 1345 and we don't need the QSR. So... If you think about it, uh, 21 CFR 820 was released in 1996. That's 26 years ago. ISO 1345 has its own issues, and it's only six years old. When you have a document that's 26 years old, even though they've made some minor changes over time, it doesn't have all the requirements that we need today for a medical device. For example, back in... <laughs> 1996, how much did we have in the way of technology? Yes, the internet did exist back in 1996, but did people have smartphones and mobile apps? Was it ubiquitous? No. Did everybody have a Wi-Fi hotspot in every single room? No. Let's just look at what they did have. Back 26 years ago, they did have software. They were very slow systems that you wouldn't be using in an OR. And they had risk mentioned once in the 21 CFR 820, once in the design section. Software, it was a PC was first developed in 1974. So that's 20 years before we had the QSR or 22 years. But you only see software mentioned seven times in the entire QSR. It appears twice under definitions, twice under design controls, twice under process validation, and once under the DMR. But we have software everywhere now. We have it in calibration. We have it in quality system management and documentation. We have it in controlling instruments that we use in our lab. Everything we do, people don't want to do anything on paper anymore. So it really doesn't cover enough of software in the QSR, and they need to change that. If you look at cybersecurity, Dove wasn't even mentioned in 21 CFR 820. 
we still don't have an international standard for quality systems and medical devices for cybersecurity. We have some cybersecurity standards out there. There is AAMI um, TIR 57, but it's not an international standard that's ubiquitous. So we, we still aren't there on cybersecurity. Risk management, that did, wasn't even created. The first edition of 1470, 1471 was released in 2000, four years after the QSR, and we're only at the third edition of that. And companies still haven't made the full transition to the third edition of it. Human factors didn't exist until 2016 as a standard. If you, I mean, yes, they released the original version in 2007, but the current version and the FDA guidance in, in really in, enforcing cyber, I'm sorry, uh, human factors as a requirement in medical device design, that wasn't really until 2016. And we're just now starting to see it more enforced in all our 510K submissions and Zenovos. And that's IEC 62366. Post-market surveillance, not even something that's covered in the QSR. Companies don't have that. In our first um, international standard for post-market surveillance is ISO 20416, and that was released in 2020, only two years ago. During COVID, it was released. So we are way behind the times in terms of what is in the content of 21 CFR not in terms of processes, but of other support systems, such as software, risk, cybersecurity, human factors, and post-market surveillance. In post-market surveillance, they've got a whole new annex in Europe for their technical file documentation. We don't even have it as a requirement. So th there's a big, big gap in just adopting, 21, adopting ISO 1345 by reference in replacing 21 CFR A20 isn't really capturing the magnitude of change we're talking about. This is not a patch. This is a full reboot. <laughs> There's no upgrade here. There's no patch. This is throw out the old and drop in something completely new with a whole bunch of new requirements. And they really haven't got enough guidance documents. They, they haven't released the cybersecurity guidance yet. They haven't got any post-market surveillance requirements. That hasn't even been approved by Congress for these lower risk devices, only for the class three devices. We don't have an international standard for cybersecurity. Um, risk management, they're just re they just released yesterday. They had a training from the FDA. Here's basic risk management, and here's how to apply it. But it's taken years and multiple revisions before 14971 was really understood in Europe. And it's still, we have all kinds of companies that don't get it. It's not just risk analysis. It's the entire risk management process. You need a risk management policy. You need a risk management procedure. You need hazard identification. You need option control analysis. You have to do verification of it. You need a risk management report. You need post-market surveillance of risks. All those things need to be included, and it's a continuous process that you maintain. It's not a once-and-done kind of thing. So when you have all of these things that are just in risk alone that need to be updated and maintained, and people don't understand it well, now in Europe where it is required, the FDA is going to have to do a lot more in terms of guidance on how do we apply risk management? How do we apply cybersecurity? How do we apply human factors? When you submit a 510K now with human factors documentation, you get it back a deficiency list that's three pages long that doesn't even remotely resemble what the guidance document from 2016 says. So they're not even on the same page with their own guidance in terms of what they're enforcing now. So we really need to modernize the quality system requirements at the FDA. I agree with that. But don't say, oh, it's going to save you time and it's going to save money because we don't have to maintain two systems. We're not maintaining two systems. We have one system that meets both requirements, and the FDA isn't on the same page with any of it. <laughs> They're using an old system that's 26 years old, and they have a a guidance document for inspectors that's 108 pages. It's almost as old. It, it's not going to be a quick transition. It's not going to be a smooth transition. It's going to be quite painful. And for the party that's going to be in the most pain, the FDA. 
because they have to educate everybody internally at the FDA and everybody in Congress that this is what we're not even covering today. And this is what we need to cover going forward to really have uh, a quali quality system requirement that makes sense for today's devices in today's environment for the medical industry. Um, standards that should be embedded in this are not just ISO 1345. This should be AMI TIR 57, IEC 62366, ISO TR 20416, which is the postmarket surveillance requirement, 14971 for risk, 62304 for software. Um, and then if you're getting more into software, you have two different types. You have one that's the hazard identification using 14971 for embedded systems. And then you have it also for quality system requirements. So you have an ISO TR 80002-1 and 80002-2. The second one is for the quality system requirements. And that's just scratching the surface. There will be more. They will keep on coming up with new revisions, new guidance documents, new standards. But we need to have a guidance document that explains how each one of these standards is going to be applied towards the requirement you have to adopt ISO 1345. What about these support things? You get a one little line um, note in several places, like you, the uh, standard for human factors, it's IEC 62366, or software 62304. That little note that's not part of the actual body of the standard, it's a, it's a note. How do we interpret that at the FDA? How are we going to train people on that? Where's the guidance document that explains all this? So that's why we need to modernize the quality system requirements at the FDA. They're 26 years old, and they don't cover any of these things that involve latest technology that we're actually using in industry. But at the same time, the way they're going about it, trying to say you can stop maintaining two systems and just have one is not real. We have one system that we're following that meets both requirements, and the FDA needs to get their so themselves on the right page in terms of guidance for inspectors, this is how we want you to apply it, and then make a requirement for everybody. If you have any other comments, please leave them below. And if you like this and thought it would be helpful to somebody else that's thinking about implementing ISO 1345 in anticipation of this change, please share the link with them. Thank you, and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.